2019 Poloma attack. The 2019 Poloma attack occurred on 14 February 2019 when a convoy of vehicles carrying Indian security personnel on the Jammu Srinagar National Highway was attacked by a vehicle borne suicide bomber at Lefapra in the Poloma district of the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. The attack killed 40 Indian Central Reserve Police Force CRPF personnel as well as the perpetrator Ahmad Dorwa was a local Kashmiri youth from Poloma district. The responsibility for the attack was claimed by the Pakistan-based Islamist terrorist group jaish e mohammed India blamed neighboring Pakistan for the attack, while the latter condemned the attack and denied having any connections to it. The attack dealt a severe blow to India-Pakistan relations consequently resulting in the 2019 India-Pakistan military standoff. Subsequently, Indian investigations identified 19 accused. By August 2021, the main accused along with six others had been killed, and seven had been arrested terrorist attack in India. Background Further information, Kashmir conflict and Pakistan and state-sponsored terrorism Kashmir is a disputed territory claimed both by India and Pakistan with both countries administering part of the territory. Pakistan has sought to gain control of Indian-administered Kashmir. An insurgency began to proliferate in Indian-administered Kashmir in the late ERs. Pakistan provided the insurgency with material support since 1989. About 70,000 people have been killed in the uprising and the Indian crackdown. According to Time, unrest in Kashmir grew in 2016 after India killed a popular militant leader, Burhanwani. A rising number of young locals from Indian-administered Kashmir have joined the militancy. Many sources state that the majority of militants in Kashmir are now local, not foreign. In 2018 alone, the death toll included 260 militants, 160 civilians and 150 government forces since 2015. Pakistan-based militants in Kashmir have increasingly taken to high-profile suicide attacks against the Indian security forces. In July 2015, three gunmen attacked a bus and police station in Gurdaspur. Early in 2016, four to six gunmen attacked the Pathanka Air Force Station. In February and June 2016, the militants killed nine and eight security personnel respectively in Pamper. In September 2016, four assailants attacked an Indian Army Brigade headquarters in Nuri killing 19 soldiers. On 31 December 2017, the Commando Training Center at Lepra was also attacked by militants killing five security personnel. These attacks took place in the vicinity of the Jammu Srinagar National Highway. Attack on 14 February 2019, a convoy of 78 vehicles transporting more than 2,500 Central Reserve Police Force CRPF personnel from Jammu to Srinagar was traveling on National Highway 44. The convoy had left Jammu around 3.30 IST and was carrying a large number of personnel due to the highway having been shut down for two days prior. The convoy was scheduled to reach its destination before sunset at Lepra near Awantapura, around 3.15 IST. A bus carrying security personnel was rammed by a car carrying explosives. It caused a blast which killed 40 CRPF personnel of the 76th Battalion and injured many others. The injured were moved to the Army Base Hospital in Srinagar, Pakistan based militant group Jaish e Mohammed claimed responsibility for the attack. They also released a video of the assailant Adil Ahmad Dar, a 22-year-old from Kakapura who had joined the group a year earlier. Dar's family had last seen him in March 2018, when he left his house on a bicycle one day and never returned. Pakistan denied any involvement, though Jaish e Moham's leader, Masood Azhar, is known to operate in the country. It is the deadliest terror attack on India state security personnel in Kashmir since Earth perpetrator was identified as Adil Ahmad Dar, a 22 year old from Kakapura. According to Dar's parents, Dar became radicalized after he was beaten by Indian police. Between September 2016 and March 2018, Adil Dar was reportedly arrested six times by Indian authorities. However, each time he was released without any charges. Investigation The National Investigation Agency and I dispatched a 12-member team to probe the attack, 
working with the Jammu and Kashmir Police initial investigations, suggested the car was carrying more than 300 kilograms, 660 pound of explosives, including 80 kilograms, 180 pound of RDX, a high explosive, and ammonium nitrate. Old Jan Huda said that the explosives might have been stolen from a construction site. He initially said that it was not possible that they were smuggled from across the border, but later said that he could not rule it out. National Investigation Agency was able to establish and confirm the identity of suicide bomber as DNA samples from Migri fragments of the car used in suicide attack matched with Adil Ahmadar's father. However, even after a year of investigation, and I was unable to trace the source of explosives. A charge sheet filed by the NIA in August 2020 named 19 accused. Aftermath Candle Light March organist in Messina, Gujarat State funerals of security personnel killed in the attack were held in their respective native places. The government of Punjab announced ex gratia compensation of 12 rupees lakhs each to the families of the killed security personnel from the state and a government job to the next of kin. India revoked Pakistan's most favored nation status. The customs duty on all Pakistani goods imported to India were raised to per percentage. The government of India urged the Financial Action Task Force on Money Laundering FATF to put Pakistan on the blacklist. The FATF decided to keep it on the gray list and gave Pakistan time till October 2019 to comply with the 27 conditions it had laid down in June 2018 when it was put on the gray list with an attending caveat. If Pakistan failed to comply, it would be added to the blacklist. On 17 February, the state administration revoked security provisions for separatist leadership protests. Bands and candlelight marches were held across India. There were violent protests in Jammu resulting in a curfew being imposed starting 14 February. The Indian community in the United Kingdom held protests outside the Pakistan High Commission in London. A delegation of Indian doctors cancelled their visit to Pakistan for the 13th Association of Anesthesiologists Congress, organized by the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, in Lahore on 7 March, Indian broadcaster Sport said it would no longer broadcast Pakistan's Super League cricket matches. The All Indian Sign Workers Association announced a ban on Pakistani actors and artists in the Indian film industry and stated that strong action would be taken on any organization violating it. The Indian Film and Television Directors Association also announced a ban on Pakistani artists in films and music produced in India. The president of the organization threatened to vandalize the sets of any Indian film production with Pakistani artists in 20 February 2019. Pakistani prisoner Sheikh Arula, who was serving a life term in India's Jaipur Central Jail under Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, was stabbed and beaten to death by four other inmates. India claimed that Sheikh Arula was allegedly killed in a brawl among the inmates over television volume. Pakistan claimed that he was killed in retaliation of the Pulwama incident following intelligence inputs. In the early morning hours of 18 February, a joint team comprising 55 Rashraya rifles, CRPF and Special Operations Group of India killed two terrorists and two supporters in an anti-terrorism encounter operation in the ensuing manhunt for the perpetrators in Pulwama. One of them, Abdul Rashid Ghazi alias Cameron, was identified as a Pakistani national and was considered the mastermind of the attack and a commander of the terrorist group jaish e Muhammad Jem. In addition, local Jem recruit Hillel Ahmed, along with two sympathizers who housed Ghazi and Ahmed to evade capture, were also shot dead in the encounter. Four security personnel were killed in the gunfight. Kashmiri students living in other parts of India faced a backlash after the attack, including violence and harassment and eviction from their homes. In response, many Indians offered to house Kashmiris who may have been evicted. It was reported that number of Kashmiris fleeing from the rest of India had reached hundreds. Jammu and Kashmir Students Organization reported that I percentage of Kashmiri students in Dehradun had been evacuated. Two Indian colleges in Dehradun announced that no new Kashmiri students will receive admission. One of those colleges, Alpine College, suspended its dean who is a Kashmiri, after some groups called for him to be fired at Tafetita Roy. The governor of the Indian state, Meghalaya, tweeted support for a boycott of everything Kashmiri. Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad disagreed with this view. 
a Kashmiri merchant was beaten in Kolkata, the attack was condemned by West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee Kashmir Police Chief Dilva Singh said they had asked affected states to protect students. Former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Omar Abdullah met with Rainath Singh seeking assistance. See main article, 2019 Balakit airstrike in 26 February, 12 Mirage 2000 jets of the Indian Air Force crossed the line of control and dropped bombs into Balakit, Pakistan. India claimed that it attacked a jaish e Mohammed training camp and killed a large number of terrorists reported to be between 300 and 350. Pakistan claimed that they quickly scrambled jets to intercept the AF jets, who dropped their payloads to quickly return over the line of control. Main article, 2019 India-Pakistan standoff in 27 February, Pakistan Air Force conducted an airstrike into Jammu and Kashmir in retaliation for the Indian airstrike the day before. Both Pakistan and India agreed that no damage was caused by Pakistan's airstrike. However, in an ensuing dogfight between Indian and Pakistani jets, an Indian MiG-21 was shot down over Pakistan and its pilot captured. Pakistan released the pilot on 1 Mark and 5 March. Pakistan arrested 44 members of various groups including the jaish e Mohammed, Some of those arrested had been named by India in a dossier it gave to Pakistan in the aftermath of the Poloma attack. Pakistan said those arrested will be held for at least 14 days, and if India provided further evidence, they would be prosecuted. Among those arrested were relatives of GEM leader Masood Azhar, including his son Hamid Azhar and his brother Adul Rothby. August 2021, Indian security forces had killed seven of the accused, including Saifullah, while seven had been arrested, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi condemned the attack and expressed solidarity with the victims and their families. Union Home Minister Rainath Singh assured that a strong response will be given to the terror attack. India blamed Pakistan for the attack. BBC News has said that the involvement of the jaish e Mohammed in the bombing directly links Pakistan to the attack, while also pointing out that jaish e Mohammed had attacked Pakistani military targets in the past. It is widely accepted among security analysts that jaish e Mohammed is the creation of Pakistan's inter-services intelligence. Pakistan banned the group in 2002, but it has resurfaced under different names and retains ISIS support. The New York Times questioned the nature of the link to Pakistan, pointing out that the bomber came from Indian-administered Kashmir and the explosives may also have been locally procured. The Indian Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said that India would completely isolate Pakistan in the diplomatic community. Pakistan denied the allegation of a link to the attack, and Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi condemned the bombing. Fawad Chaudhry, Pakistan's Federal Information Minister, said that Pakistan was taking action against jaish e Mohammed and that Pakistan would be able to assist India in taking action against terrorist groups. The Nation, a Pakistani newspaper, called the assailant a freedom fighter who eliminated members of an occupying force. Pakistan and India both recalled their ambassadors for consultations in a tit-for-tet move in 19 February 2019. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan said that providing safe haven to terrorists was not in Pakistan's interest. He asked for proof of Pakistani involvement and warned India that any military response would be met with retaliation. Indian Ministry of External Affairs responded by criticizing him for not condemning the attack and not offering any condolences for the victims. It said that claims by Adil Ahmad Dar and Pakistan-based Jaish he Mohammed was sufficient proof. It said that promises of investigation was unconvincing due to a lack of progress in Mumbai and Pathankit attack investigations. In response to Indian criticism, the newspaper Dawn pointed out that Pakistani Foreign Minister Qureshi had expressed sympathies with the victims soon after the attack following the attack on the Indian territory. The producers of the Indian Hindi films, including Notebook, Kabir Singh and Satellite Shankar decided not to release the films in Pakistan. Former Indian cricket players and Board of Control for Cricket in India BCCI called for the boycott on the 2019 World Cup group match fixture between India and Pakistan with raising concerns on banning Pakistan cricket team from playing in the 2019 Cricket World Cup tournament. However, after conducting a press meet in Dubai, the International Cricket Council ICC rejected a statement regarding banning Pakistan from the World Cup and assured that the scheduled match will go ahead as planned despite the ongoing standoff between the two nations on 8 March 2019.
that India national cricket team wore camouflage military caps in tribute to the CRPF personnel killed in the attack during the third ODI against Australia at Ranchi. The players also donated their match fees to the National Defence Fund. The Pakistan Cricket Board wrote to the ICC to protest the gesture. The ICC stated that BCCI had asked for, and received, permission to wear the caps if United States condemned the attack and added it would work with India in counterterrorism efforts. It asked Pakistan to stop sheltering terrorists and urged it to cooperate with the investigation and punish those responsible. Pakistan said it was ready to cooperate with such an investigation. A statement from the U.S. Department of State noted that Pakistan-based Jaish e Mohammed Jem had claimed responsibility for the attack. Bangladesh, Bhutan, China, France, Hungary, Israel, Maldives, Nepal, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates and the United Kingdom condemned the attack, as did the United Nations Secretary General. China and Turkey also defended Pakistan's efforts to fight terrorism. China placed a temporary block on a UN Security Council resolution following the attack, which was backed by all other permanent members of the Council. To designate GEM leader Masood Azhar as a global terrorist, Iran's deputy foreign minister Abbas Arachi met with India's external affairs minister Sushma Swara and referring to both the 2019 Pulwama attack and the 2019 Kashifin suicide bombing, he stated that Iran and India would work together to prevent future attacks. Legacy the Indian cricket team paid tribute to the 40 soldiers killed in the Palma attack by wearing the camouflage caps instead of the usual sky blue Team India cap. During the third one-day international match with Australia in Ranchi, Pakistan objected to this gesture and Pakistani Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry and Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi called the International Cricket Council ICC to ban the Indian team for allegedly mixing cricket with politics. After a complaint from the Pakistani Cricket Board, by CC clarified that the Indian team had requested and was granted permission to wear the camouflage caps as a part of fundraising drive and to pay tribute to the soldiers killed in the attack. 